guys. So we made it here to the Big E. I've never been here, but uh, we're following the stream and the only part of the area that has like sand on the road. We're in the show. I'm at the Bachman display. G Gage Thomas. Looks like we got the O Gage stuff over here. Not very crowded yet. Probably partly due to the storm, partly due to COVID. HO Thomas stuff. I think tomorrow's gonna be busier than today. 360 rooms book. Plus they got a gymnastics thing going on. More Bachman stuff. Looks like they got a couple of chargers and alternate schemes. I can give you last year's catalog if you like that. Our new catalogs will be printed. It's the Amtrak Day 1 paint scheme. 50th anniversary in it. These things sound great. Are you planning a N scale model? Because that looks like an N scale prototype. <laughs> That's already we announced it already. All right. Well, there's a non functional ALC 42. Very nice. The first tooling shot, there's some fixes that need to be made, but all well, part of it. blades on the roof aren't correct, and uh, I have to, to fix that. Of, a couple of things. A lot of Reading fans up here. Well, I got to say, these, these locomotives look great, and I'm sure the end scalers will appreciate it. Nice HO scale layout here. Berkshire Scenic isn't here yet. Um, I have a feeling quite a few vendors and, and, dis and displays aren't going to be up and running for a while, given the weather. Okay, now I'm really impressed they got a sound decoder into this thing. This is the ESU table. We're here at the Bowser table. This is where I enter dangerous territory because they have some really great DNH engines. This looks like an SD33 Eco prototype. I love the thing. I have nobody on doing a really good job of it. They're so different than they were five years ago. Yeah. That's just showing you what we're what we're working on. What's that? You got the better decoder to work with the model. Much easier, pretty much on one Now here's a nice end track layout. I have no idea if they're selling these or if they're advertising a weathering and decaling service, but these are beautiful. CMQ, Maine Northern, New Brunswick Southern. There it is, folks. GP20 Eco. 
Bowser didn't have one, but whoever this is, they have one. Vermont Railway. Vermont Railway. Yeah, this is uh, every single... This one's now repainted into the 5015 uh, experimental colors, but there's Hal's uh, S2. This is quite impressive. Guilford, Conway Scenic. That's something. This is pretty impressive right here. Scale train. I could have seen both that engine and that engine yesterday, but of course, with my rail fanning luck, saw neither. But they have an excellent HO scale model of all three. It's like an SD40-3. Most people don't don't look at that stuff. So Scale Trains unveiled their four-axle locomotive and it's a GP30 and they're not doing a Conrail. Like, where's the Conrail? For the first time in mass plastic. Anyway, it's still exciting because there's a potential. That is an AGP 30B. Shane Wilson from Scale Trains. Uh, you just released the GP30. Uh, what drove you to decide to do that locomotive? The uh, GP30 is one that's been often asked for, and uh, being a four-axle locomotive, we want to do something that'll fit uh, nearly all model railroads. So there's a, a variety of road names and a ton of different variations. And, and uh, the last well-done GP30, that tool is probably about 30 years old now. Wow. And so this gives us an opportunity to do a fantastic locomotive uh, that in today's tooling and, and bring all the variety that folks have come to expect from us for railroad road number and area specific detail. Now speaking of variety, I know a few folks uh, I talked to are disappointed there's no Conrail or Redding. Uh, do you plan to do those in a future run? Well, I think one thing folks have to keep in mind is that there's a plethora of road names paint schemes, variations that we can do on the GP30, or just about any locomotive that we hit, that we announce. So just because it's not on the first production run, doesn't mean that it's not coming in the future. And uh, we have tons more uh, uh, production runs planned. Pretty good chance those will come down the line. All right, so uh, thanks for giving us hope. Um, now one more question about your SD45. As a DNH modeler, do you plan to do the DNH in either paint scheme in the future? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I'd have to ask Paul, uh, but I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay, well, thanks uh, Thanks for not saying just plain no, because I would really like to see it, and I would absolutely buy at least one, if not all three. Awesome. Um, so uh, thanks for talking to me, Shane, and uh, we'll see you around the show. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Take care. So we're here at Virtual Rail Fan. Bruce, I understand you're a moderator for Virtual Rail Fan? Yes, I am. And... Uh, do you, do you get a lot of uh, nasty uh, chat, or are they pretty well behaved? Well, way back in the beginning, we had considerable issues uh, back in the times that we would have called the Wild West. But uh, our moderators have done a very good job of calming the chat down and keeping it uh, family friendly, which is the way that we want. Yeah, well, I got to say, your rules are quite strict in a good way, because uh, it, it really it keeps everything... Uh, positive and nice uh, so keep doing what you're doing thank you very much that's what we, we intend to do hopefully okay thank you so we're here at Dwarven is that how you say it Dwarven anyway they have a unique way of doing lights so how does this work because I don't see any wires um, so it's fiber optic so you have a fiber optic cable a plastic cable and it is very bendable Wow. and all you do with it is just stick it into the lamplighter 
and you have light out the end of it. That is that is really incredible. If you need color lights, you can just paint it with translucent paint, and you can get red, green, any color translucent paint that you need. So yeah, I see your your crossing signals over here. Those are red, obviously, yeah, and your sig your signal's green, but. So this is our animation side, that we have some railroad crossings and block protection. So the sensor's right there. The crossing signal's right there. And yep, the signal. And this is all done without wiring, I believe, right? Yep. So underneath here, you can see the flash unit right here. And that is getting the signal from the sensor and sending two LEDs flashing back and forth and the fiber optic to take the light up to the railroad crossing. Well, I gotta say that is pretty impressive. So uh, yeah, thanks for talking to me and uh, we'll check out some other vendors, but definitely the most unique way uh, for lighting that I've seen. We're here at the Walters booth and they have their new track line here on display. Dana, can you tell me a little bit about um, what you've upgraded, because I know you acquired the Shia O'Hara line. Yeah, but the first thing to know is these are not Shinohara turnups. These are all new, completely newly designed. Um, they are complete, they're compatible with all the old track, uh, same geometry and everything, but it's a, it's all new design. One of the biggest things are, you'll notice it's a continuous point and closure rail. I did notice that. Yeah, there's, there's no hinges, so you got great continuity. I mean, it looks very prototypical. It almost looks hand laid. Yeah. And you have sprung points. So if you do manual operation, you can just use them as is. But it's real easy if you switch machines just to, you can take off that tie and take out the spring and you can use, it, use them with your switch machines. Um, you'll look here too, we have, there's jumpers that really help with all the electrical con conductivity. Um, if you want to power the frog, there's a lug right here that makes it real easy to solder that to like a frog juicer or a tortoise or something else to, to power the frog. Well, my Pico fan and Atlas fans are going to hate me, but I think you combined the best of all the different types of turnouts into one. So con congratulations and uh, thanks for showing them. We hope so. Thanks for stopping by. It's a long train, even by my standards. Now this is a modular railroad built for operation.
lot of cabooses. This is quite the layout. Another assortment of cabooses. Junction here. You even have the Acela Express. They have car cards and waybills for all of these too. It's amazing. Okay, that's great. 2020, best in show for least amount of scenery. I love it. I absolutely love it. That's a great award. When you gotta go with your train, cause you got it. <laughs> you just you just stay with them and make sure that it, if you've never done it before. Yeah. Okay. 
There is no saving you. booth and uh, looks like they're also making an Amtrak charger that'll be interesting to see uh, who makes a better charger they got some great passenger trains though okay we're now heading uh, towards the other buildings in a snowstorm That is the most cursed Thomas I've ever seen. This right here is a power pack I started the hobby with several years ago. They're still selling it. So it can't be too bad, I guess. This is HO scale, end gauge track. Main two footers. Looks like we got a modern HO layout over here. Auto rack yard. That's very nicely done. This yard is very nicely done. Look at this engine terminal. Got a couple of heritage units sitting there. Onto the Mallory and it is still snowing hard as expected. Look at this, we got a Boeing train in HO scale. Modular layouts here are a step up from what I'm used to, I'll just say that. Somewhere I have not been able to go yet. Yet is the key though.
Never did I think I'd see a G-scale intermodal train. Ah uh, yes, the 187 Vehicle Club. How could I forget? I really do enjoy seeing these though. They have a really nice CSX maintenance away train. Look at that. That is incredible. All this maintenance stuff. I should have them come do track work on my layout. Boy, this locomotive looks awfully familiar. Almost like I've seen it before. This is a really well done coal mine. Very nice. They even built it on a curve too, I'm impressed. Okay, now this is the big G gauge layout, G scale. Sorry, their scale. Uh, this, is, this is huge, but I mean it's G scale, so. That's what you expect. It's a big layout. Like I always say, it isn't a train show without at least one Lego club. This one's quite nice though. Okay, now this is just plain impressive. Entirely Technic swing bridge now if this thing actually opens that's that's even more impressive i i don't i don't think it does though but still very impressive central vermont scrap hoppers they did a really good job building these cars prototype new england lego users group here it is, folks. Monson Railroad number three. This is the real reason everyone comes here. Two foot narrow gauge, main steam locomotive. Another nice free model layout. Yeah, I got a great reverse loop. Buttons. Control panel. I would not touch that. I believe those are switch controls. What I love about Freemo is you can have a point to point layout, you can have a continuous front layout. It's all up to the user. There's a bridge similar to one I'm going to be building for the Saranac River. I got the kit right here. This module right here, just absolutely beautiful. This one, pretty interesting too. Uh, never seen anything like it. I recognize this module. I got the Death Star Trench Run, Endor, 
Someone had a lot of fun with these. Terminal. Nice aircraft carrier. What I love about M Track and, and T Track is you can do crazy stuff like this, and the people love it, and it's not doesn't have to be part of a permanent layout. Container ship, this is very cool. scenic freight train from a real life General Motors diesel stand. I don't know. A lot of people will probably pass this over being a small display, but it's pretty neat. It's I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to this. And idle. Reverser. Shorty tankers. Some lighted vehicles on this one. I've never seen it. I was thinking about getting a light bus and get, trying to get a decal. I can get the Amtrak bus. Amtrak has buses. Yeah. Get one. Yeah, or you probably have to get a white bus and then, you know, put the detail on it. Oh, like, that would be pretty cool. And that's probably one if you made five of them. You probably could sell the other four to show you first book it out, you know? <laughs> All you need to do is make the money back, and usually you're happy. But that's like this. People have tried to offer him money to buy this. He won't sell it. Okay, if someone says 20, are you going to do it? He goes, eh, maybe for 20. <laughs> here in the Young building. Uh, there's not too much in here, but it looks like Corey found what he was looking for. So, we're at a train show, right? But I don't know why my favorite vendor has to be the guy who sells all these little tiny HO scale tanks. They're so cool. Is this an actual? Oh, it is a King Tiger. $5 each. Holy crap. <laughs> 
Corey spends all his money on Dude. massive army of tanks. Dude, I just might. Oh. It's still a blizzard. It's blowing as much snow as it was at 5.50 a.m. when I went out and started the truck. All right, so it's a little past four. I am tired. I've seen, I haven't seen everything, but I've, I've got a good overview. I'm gonna do some more filming tomorrow, but we're heading out to catch a couple's freights on the BNA CSX line. Um, actually, the first one is Q264. Hopefully we can catch that one, but uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh -huh.